YouTube continues to demonetize many videos. If you like this channel, please click on my Patreon page. Link in the description. In honor of the DLC release of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Injustice 2, Video Games in the World will narrate the full story and origin of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, plus a review of the first volume of the Mirage comics released by IDW Publishing. We meet four anthropomorphic turtles wielding ninja weapons. Leonardo, the battle commander and leader, is steady and relaxed with his katanas. Michelangelo and Donatello follow suit with Nunchaku and Bow Staff. Guarding Leo's left side is Raphael, wielding his size and he's ready to release his wrath. Barring their way out are 15 members of the Purple Dragons, the toughest street gang on the east side of New York City. HA! You're dead freaks! No one trespasses on Purple Dragon turf, especially when they're wearing stupid turtle costumes. He's wrong. They're not wearing costumes. The turtles attack Airborne. Leo strikes two on the way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. The punks split into groups using firearms, but still no match for the turtles. Raphael loves his stuff, as there is a flash on one of his sides, and the punks don't even see him coming. What are these guys? Some kind of freaks? I don't know. But even freaks can bleed! Cut them! Yes, they can bleed and so can they. As the police arrives, they only find what is left of the purple dragons. The turtles will hate to run from those who will be their allies because they would not understand them. They return to their home, which is the sewers, and then we meet their adoptive father and master, an anthropomorphic rat named Splinter. And this is his story, and theirs. Many years ago, Splinter lived in Japan and was a pet of his master, Hamato Yoshi. Yoshi was amused that his own pet would mimic his movements from his cage and learning the mysterious art of ninjutsu. Yoshi was a member of the Foot Clan, the finest ninja assassins in all of Japan. His only rival, was a man named Oroku Nagi, and they competed fiercely in all things, but none more fiercely than for the love of a woman, Tang Shen. Both men tried to win her from the start, but she only loved Hamato Yoshi, triggering the jealousy of Nagi. One day, Nagi went to Shen and demanded her love for him. She refused, saying that she wanted Yoshi. In rage and jealousy, he began to beat her until Yoshi arrived to visit her. He looked at what was going on in shock and Nagi said, Ha! Yoshi dog! If I cannot have this woman, then no one will. Yoshi became blind with rage and when he came to his senses, Nagi was dead. But his shame was too great. By killing a fellow member of his clan, he had dishonored himself. He had two choices, and none of them were simple. One, to take his own life and hope for honor in the next one. Two, to flee the country and start anew. Yoshi took Splinter and a few of his belongings and fled with Shen to New York. There, Yoshi opened a small school of martial arts and prospered. The Oroku family mourned Nagi's death, especially his younger brother, Oroku Saki. Saki vowed vengeance and began intensive training in the art of ninjutsu. The foot ninja took hold of Saki's anger and used it to bend it to their own purposes. As he matured, his hatred for Yoshi grew deep and bitter. Oroku Saki, you have proven yourself. Though you are only 18, you are a most cunning assassin and an able leader. Therefore, we have chosen you to go to the US and lead the New York branch of the Foot. At last, 
a chance to avenge my brother's death. Oroku Saki had grown the Foot Clan into a force to be reckoned with within a year. Under Saki's leadership, the Foot Ninja became involved in many criminal activities, drug smuggling, arms running, and their specialty, assassination. He was successful and was known as a Shredder, but he was not satisfied. He had great hatred for Yoshi and his wife, Tang Shen. One night, Saki finally made his move. At last, the time is right. I have tracked them down. For the murder of my brother, there will be no escape. As Yoshi returned home, he found his beloved wife Tang Shen lying dead on the floor and did not expect his deadly adversary lying in wait. And then he saw her killer. Who, who are you? They call me Shredder, but you know me by another name, Oroku Saki. In the struggle, Splinter's cage was broken. He was free, but Yoshi and Shen were no more. In his grief, he wandered the streets, scavenging for food and fighting feral cats and pigeons. One day, when Splinter was hunting for his next meal, there was a truck approaching and nearly hit an old man crossing the street. The truck made a rough turn opening the back doors and releasing a canister which bounced on the streets unnoticed by the crowd. The canister hit a boy's glass jar which had four baby turtles inside and fell into the sewers. The leaves and newspapers broke their fall, but the canister wasn't so lucky as it broke and spilled a green radioactive goo on them. Splinter felt sympathy for them and washed them off of the goo as much as he could. He gathered the four in a coffee can and took them to his burrow to sleep. The next morning, the can had tipped over and the baby turtles had doubled in size. Splinter was growing as well and developed intellect and he was amazed at how intelligent they seemed. But then one of the turtles spoke. Splinter? More words followed. Pizza! Radical! Star Trek! The turtle soon walked on two legs and followed Splinter everywhere except above ground because humanity would not understand. Splinter trained them in the art of ninja and then named them after the greatest masters of the Renaissance. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. Raphael then goes to deliver a message of challenge to the Shredder and manages to incapacitate ninja guards and interrupt Saki's meeting with some flunkies. Saki receives the letter and accepts the duel to the death. The turtles then face off against Shredder, but first they fight as foot soldiers. The turtles defeat them, but the foot soldiers leave their mark. It was students fighting students, but now they were facing off against a master. Shredder was very skilled and it seems that no one at a time was not working so good. Although Leonardo managed to wound him, he was fatigued but not willing to go down without a fight. So the turtle used group tactics and finally Leo stabs him with his katana. Shredder then says, So this is it. I am helpless. Finish me off. We turtles are not dots without honor, Shredder. I give you one last chance to redeem your honor. Take this blade and commit seppuku. Shredder is not willing to do so as he tries to use a thermite grenade, but Donnie throws his staff at him, causing him to fall off the building to his death. The turtles return home, exhausted and wounded after a long, tough battle. They are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They strike hard and fade away into the night. So that's how it all began nearly 24 years ago. It started with the Turtles against the Shredder, but it was not the end, of course, because Shredder will return many times. Now, I really enjoyed reading the entire volume and seeing them meet April O'Neil, Casey Jones, and also their journey into space fighting the Federation and the Triceratons as well. 
Since their first appearance, the Turtles have become a worldwide phenomenon, spawning a cartoon over 30 years ago, a live action movie 27 years ago, with two sequels, video games, anime, and tons of other merchandise as well. Of the first volume, I enjoyed not only the first issue, but also April's first appearance, and also Raphael and Casey Jones' first encounter. So, I did this first full story combined with a review of my own, not just because I'm a fan of the Turtles since my childhood, and also because of their debut in Injustice 2. My best guess is due to their team up with Batman that they have this debut in Injustice 2. The Turtles, I also remember them teaming up with the Power Rangers in the episodes Save Our Ship and Shell Shocked in Power Rangers in Space. They also had crossovers with the Ghostbusters, and no, not the 2016 movie Ghostbusters. And also, Raphael reminded me a bit of myself because he would often get pissed too. Too much, like I did. I did used to get pissed off a lot when whenever things didn't go my way or whenever I fell in an exam, but told that things don't often go the way they go, so learn to accept them. Leonardo was my favorite because of his leadership and also because I love swords. <laughs> Michelangelo always made me laugh and also Donatello I liked since he was very smart and he was a force to be reckoned with with that bow staff of his. Splinter is one of the best fathers in comics and stories that I've seen. He was wise, humble, and a strict but caring father. In many ways when he wanted a heart to heart talk with, with one of the turtles, he in many ways reminded me of my dad whenever there was a life lesson to be taught from him. April O'Neil being a scientist and computer whiz was very interesting than being a news reporter like in the 1987 cartoon and the live action films. And Casey Jones still makes me laugh and he's a pretty badass vigilante. So finally, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from Mirage are awesome, a great beginning of an awesome franchise, and hopefully I can review the next other volumes, people. This volume on a scale of F to A gets an A+. Comment, like, share, and subscribe. This is John, host of Video Games in the World. Have a good one, and Turtle Power!